1994, Smalls opened up, and by assessing my audience, I saw right away it was young people that wanted to come to Smalls, because Smalls had a great price, it had some free food, it had a lot of great policies for artists that could come and sketch, and it was a, such a relaxed atmosphere that it cornered the market on something that the other clubs weren't doing. Well, Smalls was just such a, it was a wild kind of environment, but uh, just musicians and people hanging out late, and it was open late all night, and uh, just kind of the uh, Wild West type of environment, really, for, for jazz. But it was so many great artists that came through there and came up there, you know, Kurt Rosenwinkel and Jason Linder and Omer Avital and Greg Tardy and Sherman Irby and Peter Bernstein, and Brad Meldow, one after the other, just everybody played here. You know, it was an amazing collection of, of talent, all of whom were just young guys at the time, living in Brooklyn or living wherever they could and coming to play at Smalls. I started playing at Smalls in 1994. Mitch Borden gave me the opportunity to play here. He gave me the gig that started at 2 a.m. on a Tuesday, went to 6, and I was here for years doing that 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. slot running a jam session, playing with my group, and hanging out in what was one of the most unbelievable environments for music. You know, I came up at a time when the Village Gate was still around, Bradley's, and Smalls was kind of a new thing in that it integrated all these musicians together in an extremely informal environment. And uh, it was just a wonderful, wild time. And I watched Mitch Borden work tirelessly and uh, admirably from a very generous point of view of giving to the artist and to the cultural scene of New York City. Me and Tommy Turrentine were there. I lived in it. Frank Hewitt, piano player, we lived here. I lived in the refrigerator, the walk-in refrigerator. I made the New York smallest apartment in the walk-in refrigerator. And I was there from sometime all night, all day, until I was, you know, back and forth to LA. So I was in there 24-7. You know, it kept me involved. This is this, this, this part, it's, it's actually my life. You know, it keeps me, it keeps me going. When I first came to Smalls, you know, it was the, the Smalls that would stay up until 9, 10 in the morning. That was around the time when I first got here in 2002. And, uh, and if you missed that, yeah, it was something. It was, it was, it was pretty happening. After September 11th, New York really changed a lot and uh, became very expensive. And uh, Mitch's business model didn't quite fly at that point. That's when I became involved and uh, decided to invest my own money to buy the lease on the club and just start running the club in the way that Smalls was always had been, which was just as a musician community with a social-minded, charitable vibe. Music is the most important thing here, you know, and everyone here, it's a community of musicians really helping each other out. My name is Spencer Murphy. I'm from Syracuse, New York originally, and I moved to the New York metropolitan area to go to school in 2006. And I met Spike Wilner in 2007. He was doing his master's program at the school we were both attending. And he hooked me up with my first gigs in New York, down at Smalls right after it first reopened. And the following summer, 2008, which is five years ago now, he hired me as a manager at the club. And I've been the night manager on the weekends ever since. And uh, in that period of time, I've watched a lot of musicians grow a great deal because of their relationship with Smalls. Musicians of all ages, musicians who are my age or younger, getting their first chance at performing in front of uh, live audiences and in front of their colleagues and honestly their idols at the club because Smalls is a big hang, 
you've ever been, you know that. And also uh, musicians who are older getting a second chance to uh, re-explore um, their own voice on their instruments. A lot of older cats, as well as some of the, the greatest names right in the middle. Um, you know, it, it was beautiful for, for me to come to New York and to come to Smalls because it gave me an opportunity to not only nurture my own voice artistically and musically, but also to perform with and watch perform some of my idols, some of the cats I came up listening to. Hello, my name is Stacy Dillard, and I'm here to talk with you about what I like about Smalls, which is practically everything, being that I'm a musician myself, being a jazz, you know, jazz music is widely played and widely sought after and attended at a place like Smalls, known for people all over the world, that adds something to it. I like the, the community that's there, I like the work staff. I like what's going on, you know, I like to play. I like to play for real. I don't like to tiptoe, I like to, I like to express, whether it's whispering or sh snapping my feet and shouting and all in between. But the thing is that, you know, Smalls is an environment which musicians, from what I've seen, feel more free to do that there as opposed to other places. Let me just say that when you come to a place that you f really feel their policies are great, and you love the people working in there, you love what the concepts, you just want to support that place. You, you want to call, that's my home away from home. That's my temple. That's where I go to sit down and, and take in literature, art, poetry. This is a cultural center. Smalls has always been on a mission to keep its doors open as many hours of the day as possible and to get as many bands up in one day. We often have four bands a day here. And to include as much audience as we can by making all kinds of prices affordable for the students that come here. And our major clientele are students, by and large. We need them and we need to offer them great policies like stay all night for just one price. And it's often just $10 for students. And uh, we have some co no cover shows that they can attend as well. And uh, what we feel working with the students this way is we have uh, ensured our longevity as that there will always be uh, smalls open to return visits by these students that then get older and, and appreciate jazz as they are uh, coming, coming of age and as a connoisseur of jazz on their own. But when they come here as a student, it's, it's often the most incredible experience for them. They, they feel inspired by the musicians that work here and they see how devoted they are.